Hey guys, this is Mr. Wells. Uh, we're going to do the history of vaudeville today. Um, vaudeville is a French word. Um, deals with variety. Um, and a lot of vaudeville shows uh, were variety acts. So, let's go ahead and start. Uh, vaudeville started in the 1880s and it ended in the 1930s. Um, and it was mostly made up of 10-minute acts that included singers, dancers, jugglers, magicians, musicians, actors, comedians. They had dog and pony, pony shows, and they had a lot of specialty acts, too. Anything that was really unique, uh, peculiar, or in, involved a lot of talent, they always included in these variety uh, shows known as vaudeville. Um, and they, um, the verse popular vaudeville shows were for all ages. Uh, it was for all the families of the middle class. Now, how did it start? Um, it really first started uh, evolving and becoming vaudeville um, around the 1850s. It uh, started with a lot of frontier settlements, um, a lot of uh, startup villages, and it appealed mostly to all male audiences. Um, they were originally not family-friendly at all, and they were considered very school-inappropriate. Um, so once a gentleman named Tony Pastor, um, around 1881, um, was credited for cleaning up the vaudeville theaters and really started bringing in the middle class. So that's when vaudeville became vaudeville was when Tony Pastor came in and cleaned things up. He banned alcohol and he also forbid any form of inde indecency on the stage or in the theater. And he ensured to everyone that all the materials and acts were acceptable uh, to the general and public, including the families. Now, he also gave away such gifts, and he gave away hams uh, to the audience members. Um, he really made a uh, really big entertaining time for the theater. Um, now, there's two other people that are also credited with, credited with the development of vaudeville, and that is B.F. Keith and E.F. Albee, um, known as Keith and Albee. Uh, they teamed up together in Boston to operate the Bijou Theater in Boston, Massachusetts. Chusets, it's a weird word. Um, and later they developed one of the most prestigious and biggest vaudeville chains in the United States. Um, they even partnered with the Orpheum Circuit. Um, in Memphis, we have the Orpheum Theater, and that first started off as a vaudeville chain in the Orpheum Seeker circuit, which Keith and Albie ended up running. Um, now, the Keith and Albie operation was headquartered in, the U in New York City. And from there, they actually sent bands of entertainers across America. Now, families uh, who saw a Keith and Albie vaudeville house or a show come into town... Uh, they were guaranteed uh, that all the performers um, offered had respectable acts and also led respectable lives. They were trying to push family-friendly entertainment. That was a big push for them. Now, along with the vaudeville shows, they also had managers that operated, and B.E. Albee, known as Albee, um, is considered the ultimate manager during this time. Um, he, op he opened the United Bookings Office in New York City, and he actually booked uh, the majority of all the vaudeville circuits in the U.S., and he also received a 5% commission for doing so. Uh, he made a lot of money doing this. Now, the stars of vaudeville. You know, some of the biggest names of the mid-20th century got their start in vaudeville, including Judy Garland, Will Rogers, Bob Hope, and Ethel Merman. Uh, most of the stars of vaudeville actually ended up making it big on Broadway, the radio, and movies, and or television. Uh, the Palace Theater in New York City uh, is on Broadway, and that was the biggest vaudeville theater in the country. And usually, in, in, in the vaudeville scene, when you made it to the Palace Theater in New York City, you were at the epitome of your career and more likely going to be discovered to be put on Broadway and in movies and so on. Now, vaudeville had a decline, um, and the reason why it began to decline in the 1930s 
Uh, one part was due to the Great Depression. People couldn't afford tickets anymore, so it really hurt ticket sales and the attendances that the um, theaters usually had. And then also during this time, we had the birth and popularity of talking and singing and dancing movies that brought vaudeville stars to towns on the big screen that provided a lot of fierce competition. So remember, I, li I literally just said before all this that some of the biggest stars in the mid-20s 20th century got their start in vaudeville. So what you began to see is a lot of these vaudeville stars ended up on the big screen. So people could just go see a movie and see them well polished in a movie, singing and dancing and talking. And that became really popular. And that also ended it also contributed to the end of vaudeville. Now some ad some aspects of vaudeville still survived. Um, like in from 1948 to 1971 on CBS, um, Ed Sullivan brought a weekly vaudeville show. Um, also from 1964 to 1970 on ABC, the Hollywood Palace on Saturday nights did the same thing. Now today, um, we have late night programming, which we can still find sketch comedy, musical acts, and stand-up, which were all a part of vaudeville. Uh, take, for example, the Jimmy Fallon show. Did you have 